So who will control the Pennsylvania state legislature next year? That seems like a fairly simple question. But somehow, more than a month after the midterms, there isn't a clear answer. Here's the predicament. Now, I'm going to need y'all to follow me closely here. Democrats won a majority of seats in the State House for the first time in a dozen years, but the margin was razor thin, 102 to 101, decided by fewer than 65 votes in a race in the Philadelphia suburbs. And it turned out to be even more tenuous because one of the victorious Democrats was dead, and he died too late in the election cycle to have his name removed from the ballot. What's more, two Democrats who won their state House races, but who, at the same time, won seats to higher office, have since resigned, further complicating matters. And Republicans, of course, are seizing on those complications, arguing that Democrats lack a mandate to control the state House and filing a lawsuit to block the trio's special elections that would all but certainly reconfirm Democratic control of the chamber. Yeah, it's a mess. And it's indicative of Republicans' new strategy, using arcane and sometimes unfair rules to seize power. Joining me now is Pennsylvania State Representative and House Democratic Leader Joanna McClinton. I should note that Representative McClinton has been sworn in as House Majority Leader despite all the chaos. <laughs> Representative, welcome. So here, here's the deal. Who currently controls the Pennsylvania State House? As they say in Hollywood, stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. So uh, you you laid it out clearly, you know, voters here in Pennsylvania on Tuesday, November the 8th, they decided in 102 districts that Democrats should take their voices, their values and their agenda items to the state capitol. But of course, we have some precarious circumstances. Yeah. Oh, you are so kind, precarious. So, so what's your path forward here? I mean, seriously, uh, it is a mess. Republicans are, are looking to take advantage of the complications in the mess. How, how do you see this playing out? So the first thing I want everyone to know is I started last week with a meeting with the Republican leader with the hopes that we could start this razor thin majority new session in January with power sharing agreements, with ways that we can work together on the rules, because we don't want to keep bills and committees. We want to work together. We are very cognizant of our reality, even with a one seat majority. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to negotiate an agreement, so we had to move really quickly. And moving quickly for me meant there was a vacancy and and it had to be a writ of special election issued. But that can only happen once someone is sworn in to be the acting interim officer. So I got sworn in, and because my caucus won in 102 districts, I was the acting interim presiding officer. So I am hopeful that as the court decides there's going to be the first meeting in the court of Com the Commonwealth Court in Pennsylvania next right. Wednesday, I am hopeful that they will say, go ahead and hold all the elections on February the 7th so that voters can make sure that their voices are heard and we can have a full complement in Harrisburg sooner than later. So I, I want to get your take on my analysis of how um, Republicans and Democrats approach moments like this, um, where Democrats are, you know, in the minority. Uh, they often ask, how do we convince the majority to pass X? When Republicans are in the minority, they ask, how do we use the rules of the majority against the majority? How do you see this moment? Is this a moment where you have, um, whether you're in the minority or the majority, a, a chance to politically engage in a way uh, that you make the rules work for you and you take advantage of the opportunity and push back on the silliness that, oh, you don't have a mandate uh, when the seats are that close, um, that still doesn't address the fact that you, you have more seats. How do you see That's that? That's correct. 
That's correct. I mean, we have been told clearly uh, when I started in the House, right, there were 121 Republicans and 82 Democrats. So at that time, they could say they had a mandate from voters with a certain agenda. We're not able to say that we have a mandate except to say they rejected their extremism, uh, their election denialism that they demonstrated since 2020. That was rejected. And yes, it was only 65 votes in the last race. So we've got to be grown ups here. We want to get back to Harrisburg in January. We want to do the people's work. We want to figure out how we can work together to get good bills over to the Senate. I'm so very excited to work with our governor-elect, Josh Shapiro, and Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis. We have serious work to do. We cannot simply say, you know, that they now have a mirage of the majority because it is fastly going to fade. It's going to fastly fade as soon as we have those special elections. So, so, Leader McClinton, I, I want to broaden it out just a little bit more uh, and ask you, from a, a national perspective, state by state, if you will, do you think the, the Democrats have a better sense of taking the opportunities that lie in front of them as state legislators, uh, legislatures a little bit more seriously? Because for me, that's always been the play. Um, that's how you begin to really reshape the political uh, landscape. Uh, it's not top-down. It's not winning the presidency. It's not winning um, the Senate or the House. It's really is how you grow it up from the state legislative side. How do you see it? And how should Democrats see it nationally? So nationally, everybody's always very excited about Washington, D.C. And as we say <laughs> in my community, no shade. But in state capitals, we get to determine what the minimum wage is. We get to protect voting rights. We get to make sure that those who care about choice are able to have access to all health care options for everybody who wants to access them, all of the women in our communities. Harrisburg, our state capital, like so many others, Colorado, uh, Oregon, uh, Nevada, there are lots of states now where they're Democrats that have super majorities. So I'm looking forward, recognizing that we only have flipped one chamber to work across the aisle in the Senate, to work across the aisle in the House, and to get the best idea to Governor Shapiro's desks. Well, I, I applaud the effort and will stay tuned to the chaos. I appreciate you. Pennsylvania State Representative Joanna McClinton, thank you very, very much.